Got it. Got it. And we're on. You might hear babies crying in the background. I'm so sorry. Yes. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah welcome everybody welcome to everyone who's watch who's kind of joined us live hello to everybody who's watching the recording so this is the sixth session now that in this series we've covered kind of directors music directors producers marketing i'm forgetting something else so, <laughs> lots, of, lots, oh, lots, of, lots of different roles and this one is all about choreography, dance captains, how they relate to the various other roles in theatre, key insights. We're joined by some fabulous people. Um, and yeah, I'll pass on to Hannah to introduce our guests. Amazing. So um, it'd probably take me 30 minutes to go through bios, but I'm going to introduce you both. Um, so tonight for our choreography and dance captain masterclass conversation, we are honoured to have with us Billy Mitchell. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and Jessica <laughs> Curtin. Hello. <laughs> so, Billy, choreography work includes, we're going to go quick through Cats, associate choreographer for Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn, Joseph, um, School of Rock. Oh my goodness. Okay, Joseph again. Um, Billy's also been dance captain at School of Rock for Wicked and Mamma Mia. So, I mean, it's only a short list, really, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> definitely knows what he's talking about i think yeah. that's fair i, mean, <laughs> I was thinking did i do all those things yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, wowzers and then we've got jess trained at arts ed um so we've got theater credits first cover to the queen again in cinderella dance captain swing in school of rock i think you probably picked up by now that these two might have known each other prior to tonight's event um so yeah also assistant dance captain swing um in school of rock june in chicago gold digger for De uh, definitive rat pack that's where we met First cover I've been in Batman Life. Um, I said I wasn't going to go through the whole thing, but I love it all, so I'm just going to do it. First cover, <laughs> Make Sure You Love Never Dies. Um, Pauline, first cover, Ruby and Georgina in Shout. Other credits include, include the BBC, ITV, London Palladium, YouTube Comedy Sketch, and a variety of workshops. So there you have it, folks. It's, um, it's an honour to have you both with us. Thank you so, so, so much for doing this and subjecting yourself to the upcoming grilling. Uh, <laughs> yes, no, you thank so you very much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous <Got> now. <laughs> so, um, to kick us off, um, and let's go in alphabetical order. So, we'll have Billy first, and then can you kick over to Jess? Can you just tell us basically a little bit about yourselves personally, um, your careers that you're currently in, and how you got to where you are now, like in a nutshell? Yes, absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Billy Mitchell. Um, I'm from London. Um, I am a choreographer um, and a movement director and a creative. Um, I came actually into the business or into the world of performing really, really late. I didn't start till I was 18. Um, and it was one of those still at school, not really knowing what I wanted to do, but I had a really fantastic drama teacher and that kind of like led the way along with a really funny story of my mum entering me into a dance competition that that I ended up winning and going to college but that um then uh, behind every great performer there's a mum <laughs> <this, laughs> because I didn't do she, she's she's not a stage she's not stage school because I never went to stage school so but she she did do very well um and so then I went into the business and into musical theatre. Um, when I first started out, um, I had no idea that I was going to do the dance captain stuff. Um, my first job, um, I was ensemble with a first cover and I was assistant dance captain. From there on to my second job, I then went into swing and then it just kind of happened. I lived in the swing world and then I became assistant dance captain, dance captain, assistant choreographer, associate choreographer, choreographer. It, it, it literally went in that way. Um, and I love it. I, I realized very soon, which a lot of people are very shocked when I say this. A lot of performers are shocked when they say this. I um, realized that I never want, never really wanted the spotlight. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a really interesting thing to say because I love performing. But I never wanted, I say this to Jess all the time, I never wanted to be the lead, but I loved the the maintenance of a show. I loved looking after a show. Um, 
uh, believe it or not, I loved rehearsals. Um, and I'm really, really nosy. So I want you to know absolutely everything about the show. So that's kind of how <laughs> being a dance captain, that was a, a, a really good trait to have. Um, so I love uh, that he says nosy, but actually he's just got a gift. And it's not in a nosy way. It's in an absolute magical brain way. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> later, later. Um, I so been really, really fortunate as well in my career. I started on tour and then I was really lucky to spend over 10 years in the West End on various shows in various capacities and loved them all. I stopped performing um just before the pandemic. So actually in School of Rock was my last my last performing job. Um, and then I made a decision as I moved to Cinderella that because what I was doing was kind of my job and still performing. And then 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 they wanted, they was like, what do you want to do? And I decided to make the cut. Um, yeah, and haven't really looked back since. Really, how, really happy. How did you really feel excited. about that? Like, do, did you feel like there was a growth getting up to that point? And you're wondering whether or not to take the lead. I think because I, so I was a so associate choreographer and a swing in the show. Mm. I think because I have so much respect and love for performing, um, what what a difficulty for me, I don't know if I'm getting into this too so soon, but a difficulty mm. was for me is in School of Rock, for instance, I rehearsed a lot. You rehearse a lot because there's children. So there's various rehearsals. So the performing acts aspect for me, um, my performance obviously didn't change when I got on stage, but it became that it, it moved down the list of importance. I found, I found myself um, in rehearsals all day, running from the rehearsal studio, literally onto stage. And that was kind of the turning point for me that I thought if I can focus all in one way and put all of my energy into that, then it'll be lovely to have another person there that can go on and be a swing and do, do their thing. And I can stay this side and, do, and crack on with the job that I've been doing. So that was kind of that was kind of it. Mm -hmm. that was it. Right. And I, I, I didn't I didn't regret it. And I've never I've never regretted it. Um, even when it was like a brand new show, Cinderella was Cinderella was the show after a brand new show and original London cast. But I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I even when I watched it, I didn't feel a desire to be in it. I was very content, which is which it sounds it um, feels lovely to say to be yeah. like it, it, it's it feels lovely to say there's no there's no regrets at all. My sister has a similar like brain where the first time I did a show with her, she was at telling us all where to put our hand on the handrail as we walked up the stage. And, and then she's like, can we make sure that we're all the right angle? And I'm like, why do you care? Like, <laughs> you know, like what are you doing? and then she's like, why did they put that light on at that point? That's really weird. I'm like, you're thinking about the lighting? What? Yes. what? Like she just <laughs> the show as a whole. And I'm yes. very much like, I've only ever been sort of, I'm on my track, I'm doing my job, but having that like overarching thing of, you know, sh you know, looking at everyone else's job and going, how does this fit together as a puzzle is such a gift, I think, to be able to have. It's so strange. I, I, it, I, I didn't train in any way for that kind of brain, but I was, I just, from when I was at college, I, I just knew what people were doing. And when I started my first job, which was Hello Dolly, the UK tour, which I loved and made some of my best friends, um, I wasn't assistant. I wasn't assistant dance captain at the beginning, and then because of the nosiness, and I just knew, I just knew who was who was around me. And then I think that having that then really helped me when I moved into the swing world because obviously you're aware of who 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 you're on for. Not that it works every time. It's not. It's, it does. It's with it does. No. Oh, no. Honestly, when I tell you what his brain is like in School of Rock, like you, you, he could go on for any track, and obviously you've got twelve kids and then a whole cast of adults, and Billy could switch to eight people at once. He'll go and he could talk through the show like this. Marsha comes on, she's on a seven, then Tamika's on an eight, and she's going to go to twelve, and she goes upstage right, and she's on a green mark, and then she takes the chair off, and then. It, but you can't. I'm literally. I'd sit there and be like. like in his head, not with a book, not with a Bible, just in his brain. <laughs> it's unbelievable. 
That's it's unbelievable. I think we should add swing actually to the list of roles um, in a minute for you yeah. to just let us know, you know, how that kind of fits into the picture as well. Jess, what about you? Friendly. I, it's really mad. And Billy is the, is the reason legitimately that I ever ended up in this world at all. But actually it's, I was offered, my first ever job was, would have been a lead role and dance captain in a show that then didn't happen for, at that time, the producers pulled it and it never happened. And then it came back. But I remember thinking, why has anyone chosen me to be dance captain? I'll be awful at it. Like, just absolutely not. And so I was kind of relieved when that didn't happen. And <laughs> then, um, yeah, so then I, I've i been a first cover a lot. So that's what I've done more than anything, like first cover to one of the principal roles or just one of the roles and been in the ensemble and been super happy with that. And then I was offered... Um, swing once for Oliver and I was terrified and turned the job down which was mad Cameron McIntosh's Oliver tour for like 18 months and like had no work it wasn't like oh it's okay because I've got other jobs it was like no 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 there's nothing else but I was like why no I can't we discuss this before I don't know why I can't believe it and it was an 18 month UK tour of Oliver as a swing and I went no I can't I'm not brave enough I can't do it so I, I didn't do it Oh. I believe it Jessica so I didn't do it <laughs> madness and, I think I, and then and then I was like out of work for a year after that it was kind of crazy and then like lots of stuff happened I was first cover first cover first cover or down to the last two for a lead role and then I was like I can't handle it I need to take a minute out of the industry so I then went it's too much for my heart I need a break um from too many near misses of really fun and exciting things and then just going I'm sad about it. I'm going to take a minute. Um, so I stepped out of the industry and did my teaching qualification. So I'm a fully qualified secondary school teacher. So I was like, yay, Hannah the teacher too. Um, so like, yeah, I'm like, qualified. Yeah, no, I guess you're amazing. I, you're qualified in my books. Um, so then I was doing that and I kind of hoped I'd be doing that forever and it would it would keep me happy and it keep me off the off the streets or going back into the musical theatre world. And then, um, but it wasn't and I was missing it so much. And then Billy Mitchell, we were at like a bowling, but friend's birthday thing. And he was like, do you want to be in School of Rock? But th we didn't know each other that well then. He didn't know what I could do, like what, where my like confidence was or what I was good at. And he was like, I just feel like you'd be really good. He's like, would you be a good swing? And I was going, and I, bearing in mind, he didn't know that I was thinking that I'd like to go back into the industry really. And I, but I was going, oh, I would like to. And he went, why don't you, um, would you be a good swing? And I was like, no, awful. And my mate kicked me under the table and I was like, what? And he went, watch The Soprano, like, I went, really not great. Yeah. And then he was like, I talked myself out of it. My friend took me to the toilet and went, Billy Mitchell thinks you'd be really good for this job. Get back in there now and say you'd like to. And I sat back down and went. I think you're an amazing Soprano. <laughs> yes. I, I was like, maybe I would like to. Anyway, long story short, I then was his assistant. And I don't know how you saw it in me that I'd be any good at it, Bills, but. Well, well. Like, no. like Jess said, we were friends. Yes. We, we, we were friends and it was, it was, we met through friends of friends and I needed, in School of Rock, um, I needed an assistant dance captain and a swing and someone who was great with children. Jess mm. was, a, Jess at the time was a teacher. <laughs> so I was <laughs> like, and it, it, I obviously hadn't seen her with children, but I'd seen the way, we're probably going to get into this a bit more later, but Dance captain is like 70% um, people skills and how and how and how you can navigate different characters, different ages, how how you can just be open and honest and get um, um, what you want from from that person. And I, I saw that in Jess and I knew I knew that she was very talented anyway. I, I, I knew that I knew she could do all of those things. And I knew that she'd be a great swing because. Swing is very, very different how you move through the swing world, um, but she's a practicer. Mm. It's like bam, bam, man, notes, notes, notes. I, notes. I would say I'm not naturally a good swing. I would say there are some naturally good swings like Billy is naturally someone who absorbs everything I don't I'm like you Han I only absorb what I need to but then because I took the seriousness of being a swing and was terrified I was like homework 
what I'll do is loads and loads of homework and make up for the fact that I'm not naturally good at it. And then I, I was really proud then when I was like, oh, I, I have ended up being good at this, but it's not natural to me at all. But it doesn't, I don't think, I don't think it has to be. You do get natural swings and you get people like, uh, when I, as a swing, I loved it. And yeah. I found myself that I was going into jobs and before, even with my agent, uh, I'd be like, uh, I uh, make sure they know I, I'm really interested in swing. Whereas a lot of people say, I don't want swing. Um, I did. Yeah. Does everybody, did, did, will everybody know what a swing is? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, can you quickly go through the roles like individually? So what is a dance captain? What is a choreographer? What is their assistant choreographer? And what is a swing on a professional theatre production? How does that work? OK, so should I go, Jess? You go, go for it. So, so we have the choreographer. The choreographer works side by side with the director. So the choreographer is responsible for creating movement and physicality, which um, uh, helps um, with the storyline, if not borders, frame, frames whatever action is going on, tells the story through the movement. But that's a real connection with the director. Director and the choreographer have their ideas and they put those out. The associate choreographer is basically an extra brain for the choreographer. So the associate tends to um, be in a studio with the choreographer and they make, um, the chore choreographer will say, I have an idea. Okay, let's try this out. The associate choreographer will say, I have an idea. And they tend to work stuff out together. So they're kind and of- problem solve. Yes. Or like and make the choreographer's idea work. The choreographer might go, I've got this amazing idea, but I just need you to figure it out for me. And then, then the associate will go, leave it with me I'll sort is it that different to the resident choreographer yes so if you think of so then I would say the resident choreographer resident choreographer assistant choreographer dance captains tend to be not always but are dance captains definitely will be in the show tend to be in the show as a swing as well so the assistant choreographer um basically it does what it says on the tin assists tends to be the body will be a body will will help will problem solve as well um and along with the resident um uh choreographer will be there to look after the show um uh once the show's up and running the dance captain does helps with all of those things but then is the person that's in the show and has to carry um the original the, the, the original ideas do, or, or, like do show cuts so if like the cast is down for illness and there's like people that there's not enough bodies on stage to do everything then the dance captain goes right what are the important bits of everyone's parts let's make yeah. one part into let's make three parts into one part or like they cut the show, it's called cutting yeah. it, and they basically make the show work with less people than it's supposed to have. And they have, they have a really wonderful and terrifying job of maintaining the work, of a because it's very, very unlikely that the choreographer is going to be in watching the show a lot or going to be in the show or anything like that. So they... They're, uh, uh, the dance captain along with the assistant choreographer or the resident choreographer that they, they, they have to maintain the work which was originally created sometimes 25 40 years ago <laughs> you know it's it, it's stuff that's then carried down uh, passed down passed down that they then they then look after all of that then there's like a slash swing a swing is somebody that is uh, it can be on stage, but normally off stage. Um, and it's their job to learn all of the ensemble tracks. And then if one of those tracks are on holiday, so in London, for instance, you get you normally get four weeks holiday um, throughout a year contract. If they're on holiday or they're sick, it's normal. A lot of people get sick. Then you'll go on in that person's place. So that's a really really difficult job as well because sometimes you're learning like 
ridiculous amount of, of, so of sometimes you'll be on for a three-part split track which is like yeah that bit of that person's that bit of that and sometimes you'll be split tracking so tracks just the word for someone's part in the ensemble so you'll yes. split track sometimes seven people in one number like in a massive ensemble dance number I remember like in Cinderella especially the swings I wasn't a swing in Cinderella thank god <laughs> for me because I did, I'm scared of it when in dance shows like that but um they were yeah like sometimes there'd be seven seven split tracks eight split tracks within one number yeah wow. I remember when I was a vocal swing and they started talking to me about tracks and I thought they were talking about like musical <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then they were like what's your track for this one and I was like sorry <laughs> I don't understand. It was my like my first job. I was like, and then then I figured out, oh, okay, like, oh, my track is what I'm actually doing. Like uh -huh. my job in the show. I was like, it's just it's weird, isn't it? Like show speak is sort of very forget. Yes. And other other people don't really talk about the world this way. <laughs> no, of course. Of course. I think it's I think the dance captain, it's a brilliant, wonderful, rewarding job. They also are very um that they not very they are responsible for warming up the show warming up the performers so mm -hmm. and they and it's the day-to-day -day running of of these well-oiled machines that they have to keep moving through and problem solvers bam 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 that's the that's the thing and like what i said about jess um it is like i'm just, i don't know whether if whether seven, no 70 percent is is people skills of how you deal uh, how you how you approach people because everybody's different you don't know and also you, every everyday life comes into the theater as well you don't know what people are going through how how they're going to be when you approach them when you're telling them uh, they're out of time or what they're doing is a little bit different from the choreography um and the the, the dance captain the reason why I loved it and probably what is difficult about it is you're because you're in the show so the choreographer the associate choreographer are probably never going to be in the show like I said you're in the show so so you'll see stuff evolve but it's about you saying yes I know that extra shoulder roll feels great but let's stick to the original choreography you know so <laughs> and it's, it's it's how you manage that and, and yeah. Billy's, got, Billy's got the most amazing way. Billy's got the most amazing way of that. No, I've never <laughs> felt anyone be upset ever from any note he's ever given ever. Just like because he's he's seen his way. Like it just always makes you feel confident and comfortable. And he's so good at giving notes to people his age, older than him, anyone. It never feels like a note. It feels like an exciting thing that you're going to get better from. Oh, I'm not. I, 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 I'm not about um, belittling or bringing anybody down because I just don't think in in any in any life, in whatever you're doing, um, that is a good thing. But I think, um, especially with performers, mm. we're so, we're so, it's it's you put you put yourself out there, you 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 put yourself on the line every day that you just want the best i just want people to feel comfortable and yes we 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 we're only human we go wrong sometimes but that's just life it's not it's not the end of the world you know like we can laugh about it and then fix it the next show done yeah we uh, we actually asked that question to in our director and musical director um sessions as well is like how do you deal with an actor that's kind of come in and is not emotionally in the right place to engage. And it's really important for our young people um, who are on our uh, summer production branches to hear about this because they are taking on all of the production roles. So they're putting on their own summer productions um, in August and they are taking on the roles of MD, director, producer, like all of it themselves. And so they're gonna be managing their own peers in this way. So it's really okay. good and interesting for them to hear how you manage those situations. What happens when you get an actor come in for work and they're not emotionally or physically in the right state of mind how do you get the best out of them in that situation i think the beauty of being in a show this is this this is my personal this is what i feel personally and what i've always projected out is that um 
the, the exact reason that we do what we do is to for escapism for the audience and why shouldn't we use that for ourselves for four hours if if if, if there's a mo if there's well i know that there's that, that i can speak for myself there'll be moments in my life throughout my career that that you've it, it's the, the the last place that you thought that you've wanted to be and actually when you've got onto that stage and you can just you find yourself you just breathe a minute because you just focus on this this wonderful thing that you're doing so I think that's I always like to remind performers of that not just performers anybody that's in the business that mm -hmm. that you can really use it to your advantage and and to, not to your advantage that sounds terrible but to, to, to no, even, it does, it, no exactly what you mean you know what it's, i mean that's that old expression as well isn't it doctor theater everyone would say if you are feeling bad this is the most amazing thing because it's doctor theater it just can make you feel better it sounds so cheesy but it is so true yes yes and i think when it when it if it's physic if it's physical it's slightly different um i think that that never be afraid to throw it to the performers or for, throw it because we're not inside I, I can't you can't be inside in inside somebody's body and feeling how they're feeling people know whether they can or cannot do the show and i think that their strength in making those decisions in saying you know what? you're so good billy and i think what makes to me what makes an amazing dance department are people that can say not everybody's got the same facility i don't there's not that many shows anymore that are like where every dancer's got to be exactly the same and there i'm sure there are i'm trying to think of examples maybe like chorus line or or i don't and maybe not even yes. actually but the dance wise are like where you've got to be you know old-fashioned chorus numbers where you've got to be the same whereas billy always encourages people to do their own version within reason you've got to hit certain beats and you've got to hit certain things that you have to do because that's what the choreographer wants you to do so it's not saying just do what you want but it's like he would say like for example in Cinderella so I was first covered to the queen in Cinderella and Billy was obviously associate choreographer on that one and he would be like the amazing girl playing it this is how she's doing it how do you want to do it? How does it work for you? How can you make it yours? And then I didn't feel like a carbon copy of the person I was understudying. I was able to make my own character that felt like excited. And Billy was so good at encouraging that. And I've obviously seen him do that again on School of Rock. And these kids are nine, but he still says like, you're sassy. Yeah, I love that. You're the sassy one. Like he'll encourage you to be the best version of the same job you're doing the same job as the other person, yeah. but you're doing your version of it. And I think if you can find a way to encourage people to be to do the job they need to do and to hit the marks and the bits that need to be the same need to be the same. But then it's like encourage individualism where you can. It's amazing. Uh, uh, just a, an, an incredible mentor of mine. This is where this comes from is um, we don't care about what you can't do. I only care about what you can do. And you show me what, and all I want to see is what you can do. And then let's work. Let's create magic because yeah, we, let's not stress about what we can't do. So, yeah. Oh, Billy, I want to work under you. You sound amazing. It was oh. the best experience of my life. <laughs> and then he left me and went off to Joseph because I'd been his assistant dance captain. He was dance captain. He left me to go off to Joseph. And then suddenly I was dance captain and was like having a full breakdown. Like, you can't leave me. And then I ended up loving it because he'd supported me and said to me, don't do it like me. Do it like you. And yeah. he, even, he even let me take his job and do it like me with his support. He's the best. Yeah, that's amazing. That is like the best. Of um, Emma, you had a question in this section that you wanted to ask. Um, hi. Uh, uh, hi. I wanted to ask, how does choreographing for a bigger group compare to like smaller groups or solo shows? Oh, very good question. Um, I think when it, 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 it comes down to, uh, for me, um, before you, you, not before, but if you've got the bigger group or you've got the soloist, you, you've, you, you need to decide what you want to achieve in this number. 
that's 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 one of my main when I'm choreographing that's 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 kind of my main um uh, focus as I'm moving through so if if I know I want to achieve what I want to achieve and what ideas I, I've I, I've researched into my piece I've researched into my music and I know what I want to achieve then then it gives me a real good idea moving through the stages, whether it be with a soloist or a group, obviously with a soloist, um, exactly what we've just been speaking about. Um, I would be like, what can you, I, when I choreographed cats just recently, um, the girl that was the white cat, she was like, she was fantastic, but I've never seen somebody so nervous in all my life. Because it's like the white cat solo, and I was like, "Whoa, massive, isn't it?" Yeah, it's like, and obviously, it's, it's historical. And and the first thing that I said to her is, "This is not my solo. This is your solo." So so it isn't about I I will watch and I'll give and I'm going to give you an idea of what I want, but how I do it is not going to be how you do it. So as a soloist, it's you want to. I think you worked together but it's about pulling out their strengths. Also, um, I think to be stretched and challenged in a really, I'm really for like positive challenges and how they then um, develop us in performance in life. Um, Obviously choreographing a group is, is, is a much bigger picture and how a group moves through a storyline and then obviously with a group you have to think about timing you have to think about spacing you have and to think about the next exit and like how um Jess will tell you stuff about the traffic that we used to in it for instance in school in in every show but how many times you like have to redo traffic because it's got to be the same sometimes you can't that's something that can't be individual because otherwise you're going to go or no. scenery is going to go bang on your head. So you got you that you got to get that right. Yes, and I think it's um, it's 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 hard to get a group of people to to understand to to to, to all be on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's what rehearsals are for. Mm-hmm. You and tell- using the narrative and the storytelling, like yeah. the dance. I think I think this is fair to say the dance wouldn't be gratuitous it wouldn't be for the sake of dancing it's like what how are we moving the story along because in musical theatre the dancing the singing and the acting should all be moving the story along yes. so the dance the dance has got to do that as well so why and how are we doing that that probably helps with ensemble numbers rather than solos yeah Just that's a really happening. like interesting point I guess for our choreographers doing these shows so we've got um Greece High School Musical and spelling bee so musical and and Greece particularly like you know there's a it's I think it's really it's an important point to think how does this big dance number tell the story it's not like we're just stopping the acting now to do this big dance number how can you continue as the choreographer to tell the story with this movement it's so I think I think like so many times I like sit I like (laughs) I go quiet (laughs) and I'm just watching and I go what 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 are we saying here what 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 am I trying to say what 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 are we if I'm choreographing for myself or if I'm choreographing for a musical I think um the amazing thing about musical theatre is is that the ideas can be different but you have those lyrics that I, I really really love connecting with the lyrics whilst I'm choreographing because to have them on one side, to have them on one sheet and then the music playing. So so it, even if it's just a line, um, what, whatever it, Rydell High or, you know, like it, it's, what does that, how does that line make me feel? How does that line make me move? And then all of a sudden you kind of end up with this style and you're like, okay, this is my style that I'm kind of going with. And I think that's that's how you move through the process I I I think anyway (laughs) yeah that's I mean that's what we wanted to ask you next really was what is your 
creative process where do you begin do you start with the group numbers do you start do you go chronologically through and then what's your process of creating the choreography itself i <laughs> so first thing that happens is an audition routine where i'm like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm like, I don't, because you, I, I haven't delved into the musical necessarily, you know, like I haven't, I haven't been from the beginning and, but the auditions might be, you've got this job and then you're going in, you know, so if that happened really quickly, but then um, I tend to have the music um, have have some of those lyrics and then see how I move and I tend to be I looked back um was it might be it was yesterday or maybe today um on some of my videos and it's it's so funny how the original seeing the original version so then what it became and how like I knew I wanted to do this but then what it ended up being was something slightly different but still the foundations were there um I think don't overthink when you're choreographing in the sense that I, I, I sometimes get really nervous when I'd get like this idea. So um, for instance, for cats, um, the rum tum tugger number, I had this idea of it all being in um, a nightclub, but, but I wanted like, um, bouncer bouncery type thing people trying to get into the club like and I was like oh and I, I was like doubting myself and then when I actually I was like right I'm gonna do it and then I put it on its feet and I was like oh I love it it so I think once those ideas there's a reason why those ideas first ping out and mm. I think they will obviously develop but but run with them and sometimes it, it goes wrong I think that like don't get stressed if it goes if you go I don't like it I mean obviously when it's an assessment or when it's like for a performance and the deadlines come and you then got finished and it can make it more stressful for you if this keeps happening but like in Drew McConey's Chicago I remember Razzle Dazzle we just couldn't it just wasn't working and we did about three different versions of it one had bungee ropes one was without it, but it was really dancey. And like, we honestly did three different versions of the same number. And then it was like, it's, we're glad, it, he was so glad, I think that he just didn't keep trying to flog a dead horse and like try and make something work that's not working. Sometimes it's okay, I think, to be like, this isn't working, we've got to scrap it. And I, not get sad about it and stressed no, about it. I completely agree. And what Jess is, said is so useful because sometimes, you have to try and then I'll go, I'm going to leave that now and I need to go away for two days. Mm. And then something like, <laughs> you're like being in bed and then you go, oh, <laughs> this is what I want to do. Or something, you know, you, you, when, you're, when you're in that creative, mo um, the creative process in rehearsals, something will happen and then you'll be like, oh, something it, it it does end up happening sometimes it feels like it's not going to get there but sometimes you have to say I'm just going to leave that for a little while and then come back to it yeah do you write anything down or do you record yourself or do you just retain it all do you make things do you choreograph as you're going with a company or do you have it prepared before you get in the room with them how does all of that kind of work so I like to um, record I, I tend to record the the I don't think I would ever show anybody them because <laughs> like me. I'll get out of you. Sometimes me like this. Sometimes me like <laughs> so I'm like <laughs> so, so I'm trying to count and think and and so but I, I I I like to record myself in a studio just playing with ideas. Um I love to write on the lyrics. Billy, I, have you got a Bible there, Bills? I haven't. Oh, no, I, haven't. I wish we had one because Billy. So, so we, in musical theatre, we, like, we make like Bibles, right? And it's so it's so especially if you're swinging and you need to like know eight tracks or thirteen tracks, and so you need everything written down just in case. And you, you know, in rehearsals, but what's amazing is these days, I think like back in the day, they just would do it and have to see it all in the flesh. Whereas now we can take videos home. 
and then rewind yeah. and rewind and write each track down one by one and like it's so amazing that we can film things now like for choreographers I think and for swings and just for everyone but like Billy's writing of <laughs> you've again he's just meant to do this job because it's the most neat amazing specific it's wild you look at it and you're like oh it's magic it's like a the diagrams are so <laughs> neat you can read it's unreal it's like well, it's like hieroglyphics perfectionist <laughs> perfect no but I, I I think it just like I'm really believe I, I I'm a really strong believer that the, the, the lyrics and that the, they offer at me as a choreographer they offer me a lot Mm. and which is great it should be that I think it, so I tend to they'll tend to I'll tend to like circle words and like when I'm for oh like I'll like highlight a certain word or a line because that moves the the story along for me so I want to then physicalize that in some way I don't need to do like a full out eight lots of eight at that point it might just be something that I want to that I want to pick out and I think that that really helps especially when you're not when you're in um when you're choreographing not a full-on dance piece for instance like the Jellicle Ball is 10 minutes so so I chose the, the narrative but if you if you're in a, if you're in a musical where if it's Greece if it's a high school musical where the numbers are there then you've got that you've got those lyrics which which you can pick out and use and the music to then create and, the music. Who, and your dancers I think as yeah. well like and whoever you've got and what their skills are as well like because you might if you were choreographing on one group of people that the outcome would be different probably to what you're choreographing with a different group of people yes because you've got to make it suit them and yeah. make it like not one size fits all like how how can I tell this story and do all that stuff I'm saying with this group of people yes I think I, I think it's always really good to go to ask different people how did that feel what did what did what did you do there? How how did that feel for you? Because it, the, it, in the beginning, everybody's going to probably be doing everything a little bit different. So, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so it's good to see and then to find it, it, it kind of the waves settle and then you find a common ground, which mm -hmm. then becomes becomes the show. So on that note, then you talked about going in sort of originally with an audition piece. When you approach those auditions and you're looking at this potential casting net of people for this show, what are you looking for and who are you looking for? And is that is it mainly physical facility or is it also their personality? Like what attitudes do you expect from people that you're going to work with and perform as you're choreographing for? What facility are you looking for? Is that different for different shows? I think that. It's, it's definitely different. I think, obviously, if you're looking for a certain, if you're looking for very tall men, for, for instance, or you're looking for very tall ladies in, in a showgirl number or something like that, obviously the physicality side of it comes comes into it. That's kind of, this is when I used to audition, there's, there's just certain points where you go, I can't, I can't change my height. I can't change. I can't change the, my, the color of my hair. Like, if they're looking for a certain, if if the, if that's what the show requires, then I think that that's that's its own kettle of fish. Yes. Yeah. So do you feel like the choreography kind of is led by the casting in that way? I think. Like, where do you get to say to a director, "I need this character to be able to do X, Y, and Z." Yes, it's not really that way. Is it more like we want this person and then you choreograph to their facility? I think that when you come in, I think as you audition, you have an understanding of what, especially in the shows, if you're going in for a show that's 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 um, uh, been running for a long time. Um, yeah. There's obviously an understanding of what is requ uh, required of the tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in Wicked, the pineapple girl is always a smaller firecracker of a dancer you know and then you get you get the um uh like a t one of the taller like tomboy girls or uh, Milena is a bit more 
uh, which is the mother she's a bit um she's a bit more like fierce and strong and it so you so those tracks do kind of naturally happen i think if you're going into a audition and i think you for me they i just need to see a glimpse of understanding the style mm. I don't need to I don't need to see I, it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole the whole combo the whole routine I just need to see a little tiny glimpse um and then whether they're going to whether they're going to live be able to live in the world of the show I think as the show moves on like I said like they'll like with the acro or or you you know those things and also we 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 live in a wonderful world where there's some people, their strength is dance. You're going to have dancers who are, have a, a stronger singing voice, but can still dance. So I think finding the best shows have a real mix, you know? Yeah. So, so I think as the choreographer, it's, it's, it's great to say, right, I'm going to need four dancers that 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 um really really strong dancers that do, that offer me this and then I can blend those other ones in so then you've really got that light and shade throughout your ensemble or your whole cast, I would say. Who you think, Jess? I totally agree. I think they're the my, the interesting ones that I like to watch those shows when yes. you've got like twelve ensemble members that are carbon copies of each other. But personally, I don't enjoy it as much. I just much rather see like really eclectic mix of people and strengths and um like I remember again talking about a Drew McConey show that I did um Chicago I remember leaving him a panicked half an hour you've probably noticed I'm a panicker <laughs> I left him a half I left him a half an hour voice note or voice message saying I've just seen a video of my friend doing the audition dance and I can't do it like that. You should not have given me this job. And, I, and for like half an hour going, I drew, I don't know why you think I can do that. because <laughs> I, I can't do that. And he was like, but I want you, he rang me back and went, you're, you're, you need to calm down. You're, I do want you, you plonker. Probably not in such polite words. Um, he's the best <laughs> in a lovely way. Um, uh, but he was like, I want you in this show because of what you, you bring to this show and like what your style is. And I want you, and you're not going to be doing that with her at that time. And, you know, yeah. Zizi Strallen's leg up to here and all these other people that is the kind of dancer that I am not. But then he would find moments that really suited me and my style. So I'd never felt like I'm the rubbish one. It was like, I'm going to do the sassy, my sort of like my style stuff, you know? And he really made everyone stand out for what they do well, not what they don't do well. Yeah, it's that back to that thing, isn't it? Of being more interested in what you can do than what you can't do. Yeah. And it, it, it must be like, yeah, I think as a, as a singer who can dance as opposed to a dancer who can sing, like I've definitely really appreciated those moments where I've been valued for what I bring as opposed to yeah. what for what I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it is really, it is really important, isn't it? Um, okay, so uh, what skills are important in these different roles? Like what does a day in the life look like so you've talked about like choreographer but obviously your associate and your resident are there every day on the job um what does that look like for them what is the day in the life for a dance captain versus sort of a resident choreographer and then what is you know conversely sort of separate what's the day in the life of a choreographer i'd say day in life of dance captain it's quite all consuming being a dance captain isn't it i think that's fair like especially if because show cutting is often last minute because sometimes someone's on their way into work and they slip on the tube station and they don't and they hurt themselves and that happens just before the show so it's not like because you're told if you're ill and you can you call in sick at a certain time of day and where people can they do it and sometimes it just life doesn't work like that you you get an earache but you don't get your earache until 5 p.m and then it's so the dance captain has to 
do a show cut sometimes in the morning and then another one in the afternoon and then another one at warm up because someone's come in at warm up and then gone home. And so it's like, I didn't have enough people and now I really don't have enough people. And now I definitely, definitely, definitely don't have enough people. What are we going to do? And sometimes it's like the director, could he go on? No, he can't go on. Like, can anybody from the show last year go on? And I've been in that position where I've been back and been there. So have you, Billy, like, oh my God, your wicked story is amazing. Like we've both been in that position where shows have gone, could you come and be in the show again? You're like, but I haven't done it for two years (laughs) or whatever. But the dance captain, I think their world is, you have to love it so much because you're never going to be not doing it, I think that's fair yeah. like it's like and you've seen these da- dance captains before that have been quite or I've worked with dance captains that have been quite downtrodden from that and quite knackered from that and actually not not maybe super buoyant in that you know like finding it being everything the minute they wake up to going to sleep too much for them so and I think you you need to be someone who's like not too easily stressed but it's a good problem solver and can be creative with it as well like okay it's not going to work so we have to change it today and that's fine rather yeah, than like, getting too stressed. Know, like what do you do when you turn up for a show and character xyz is not able to make it what like you have to just think quick don't you and find a solution to the problem rather than panic yeah and it's mathematical sometimes yes. it's literally like it's like doing a maths equation a bit Yes. Like Billy, you, Billy's so good at it and but I am not Jess is fantastic at it she's very she's fantastic at it it's also it's just like a, but also like Jess's day start starts a lot sooner than Jess's working day starts a lot sooner than everybody else's because you she would be constantly in contact with the company manager who people call in sick or on holiday or right. so so so, so it's, it isn't a um, turn up for warm up and then you're ready to go. It's turn up for warm up. I've already cut the show twice and then <laughs> somebody else has gone off, you know, so that can, that can happen. Um, and also the, 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 the flip side of that is you do, you do get to, you are the voice between the creative team, the management and, and the cast. Um, and you do get to, keep um alive somebody's ideas and dreams and and you get to run the show <laughs> which, which which is a nice thing in not in a in a power trip way at all but you get to you get to, I, I i used to like buzz off of it <laughs> that show will because go 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 yeah so it's it and um you there are cut shows all the time that is just what happens but they're quite fun once you once you like get into it especially as a dance captain as well when you do a cut that everyone was like we might have to cancel the show and you're like nah I'm gonna figure this out out. we're not we are not cancelling the show I'm gonna come back to me give me 10 minutes and I get it because at first I was terrified and then I did turn out to be like Billy by the end and he he was like told you and I was like yeah I nailed it we did it yeah but like it's scary at the beginning because you think I can't do it, I can't do it, and then you're like, yeah, no, we did it and it worked and it was good. Would and then say- that's when you need good swings, and then you're like, thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. They, they, the, the dance captains um, also um, when they're not on, which is <laughs> so it, it, once in a blue moon, they will also go out and watch the show and take notes on the show, and then they will feed that back. So it's about the maintenance. Well, I spoke about earlier, it's the maintenance of the show. If you're um, a resident or a associate, the resident may need to be in, um, if they're not in the show, maybe they'll have like three show watches a week. And then the associate maybe will come once a week or once a month, depending on what their work schedule is like. So, so it's a nice balance of people seeing the show at different times, not watching the show every night um, seeing, seeing things from a different point of view. Um, and, and then the associate um, will give their notes. If, if, if they're not around to then deliver them to the um, cast, then they can be passed on to the dance captain who will then be the voice 
Um, mm -hmm. I think that's the, I think that's uh, that's the important thing is the dance captain has a really important voice, mm -hmm. and um, and it's difficult because you've got to find that balance because you're you you are part of the cast, but you're also the middle. You're also um, a creative as well. You know you 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 you're still maintaining that and. Um, yeah, when... the last show I was on, the dance captain, I think, was quite lonely because he found that he wasn't necessarily at the pub with all of the creatives at the end yeah. of the show because he was a cast member. But then all the cast members were used to him having to give them notes as well. So there was that little bit of respect and separation there too. So he kind of lived in this sort of middle world of like, oh, I don't really fit in in either group. <laughs> yeah. It is a and weird. I found that weird. harder as well. It's like a because I hadn't done, I haven't done it. Billy's done it for so much longer than me, and I've had a much much less experience in that world than Billy. And I think I did find it initially really hard and really weird. And I remember not wanting if you if your mates did something that you were mates and you loved them, but actually it wasn't particularly professional. That was quite hard because you'd be like, yeah. I don't I don't want to know that you're doing that or pulling a yeah. sickie or I it was quite hard because I'd be like no I want to be everyone's I want to get on with these people because I love them but I don't agree with what they're doing professionally so it, it sometimes that's tricky isn't it like yeah. that's a hard How part do you of navigate it that then How, what do you do because like my I, next question is going to be what's the most challenging part of the job and that that sounds like a really challenging like line to follow I think that I I I I think that it's always good just to be very clear when you're yeah. when you're when you're well, I used to be like inside it'd almost be like business, but not but not I didn't change myself, but this this is and and how you deliver at deliver that is you don't need to be I'm a really strong believer in you don't need to be like passive aggressive. You don't you don't need to make anybody feel uh, unworthy of being there or or or, or 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 silly or stupid or anything like that yeah, yeah. I, I really I really don't believe that you need to do that um I think that I think what I said before is if you go in with <laughs> maintaining that that shoulder roll feels lovely but we have to maintain the original <laughs> choreography and that is just your job you're ju you're just a voice you're not saying to them I don't like that shoulder roll that shoulder roll is bad no. or, or you don't look good when you do that it's like I get it it feels lovely we yes. just can't do it though yeah. <laughs> like... also, you need a, a, a notepad and a pencil or pen or pencil because that will be your life that was that was <laughs> that was our life so you just have a notepad and because everything that the choreographer says or anybody says you write down and literally you find that you've got like a thousand books at the end that you've got you've got so many so many notes and ideas and um so your 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 knowledge of the show is your power but I think you don't need to ever feel like you need to change your person to be a dance captain I think that you can give the notes very very easily as you are but just being clear that when we're talking business we're talking business and then when we're sitting in the dressing room dancing well I was say dancing to S Club 7 I was like whatever it is that was us yeah. <laughs> but, but whatever it is you don't show my uni. age please Billy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know we used to have a five minute disco like at beginners and then and then like so you can have fun you know like it's not it's not about you separating yourself from the group but it is about you having the, the, the pressure maybe is the wrong word but having that's your job you have to this is what I have to do and there's nothing wrong with being confident in that, I don't think. No. Yeah. How do you like solve that ethical problem of like, say you are sat with the company in the pub after the show and someone does say, I'm gonna pull a sickie tomorrow. Are you, in your mind, are you like, I'm not in my professional box right now because I'm in the pub? Or like, how do you, or would you be like, oh, I don't do that? Or how, like, I'm just interested to know sort of ethically, where would you fall on that one? I think that that is, really difficult yeah <laughs> I think, so that's why I'm asking it because I don't know what I would do I think for your own sanity 
and well-being this is my biggest bit of advice you leave the job at stage door yeah I'm not I don't know whether this is the right answer for this case but you leave that you leave because it can be quite overwhelming and stressful and a lot of work you leave the job at the theater because otherwise I would like I've never have slept for like because your mind just plays and plays and plays I think if someone is silly enough to tell you that they're going to pull a sickie in the pub the next day then if your company manager says are they are they did they pull a sickie if 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 someone says that you knew that you were there then you can't deny those things you know you just have to be like yeah it's it is something but I think people hopefully wouldn't be that silly to do that no. <laughs> you hope you Jess you'd have a breakdown I I would hate it yeah <laughs> I'm like no I can't no I don't think I don't think they would let's hope they wouldn't don't yeah. pull a sickie no one would do guys don't pull a sickie that's the <laughs> yeah so what's the most rewarding part of the job would you say that's telling the story Oh, we've got a rewarding story from School of Rock. Go on, Jess. Every time. Because, I mean, it was particularly rewarding because it's young people, right? You know, they're 9 to 13. And, and they, like... Also, some of them never danced before. Never. They can, and we walking, couldn't walk in time. You know, like, they're rock... They're, some of the musicians, some of the kids in the band, like, phenomenal guitarists and drummers. And they're, like... 11 and they're rock stars but they could not walk in time like and they but they've got to and it's like or like they're not actually confident so like they're like a like a classical musician but you we had to turn their physicality into like rock stars and like you know kids that are like you know shredding and like going wild and like skidding along the floor but they're not naturally they're like little like you know, like the like they are meant to be in the in the show, but they actually are like that. You know, and we'd be yeah. like, "Are we going to get them there? Do you think they're going to? Do you think they're going to be rock stars?" And then we were like, "I think we'll get there. Come on, we can. Do, we're going to get there." And then and then you like watch this kid taking a bow with the yeah. audience going, <laughs> "We'd be like sobbing, yeah. and just, like oh, absolutely really? not coming out." And they just like, "This is amazing," and it was just the most unbelievable feeling or like when they all did you're in the band I'd just cry every single time <laughs> that is the thing with with theatre isn't it the moment that you are at the end of a show and the audience are applauding everything that's happened up until that point is worth it everything yeah. that's happened up until that yeah. point is the best thing you've ever done because of that moment it's yeah. such a crazy thing isn't it I think like I... they would grow wouldn't they as people yeah I, I like think they'd like, be like the kids, the kids are, it's just, it's a, an unreal feeling of seeing them do that. And, 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 and not just kids, adults as well, you know, like to go, to go from that first rehearsal um, where somebody's starting to have a breakdown and they can't, they can't, they can't do the tap dance or what. And then you, and you get there and then the show happens and then it's like you said, everything just goes away, and it's it, it's it's just their magic. Um, it's it's really really proud and really really rewarding, and all the hours of rehearsal are worth it. <laughs> it becomes worth and, it. In the yeah, and you get such a camaraderie, I think, as well. Like dance departments are all like, I mean, I don't know if it's just because I've been spoiled working with new bills, but it always just feels like such a lovely little team. And like you, yeah. you get particularly close up like in School of Rock. I think we're as good mates as we are. We're obviously mates before, but like, you know, my brother now. And that's because we worked all day, every day, you know, yeah. 10 till 10 every day forever. And it was like, you know, it just makes you really close and really supported. Yeah. And it's an amazing thing to be part of is a dance department. And because that's what it is. It's a full department. Yes. Yeah. How do you approach rehearsals as a choreographer in the sense of do you come completely ready with concepts in your mind or with with choreography done or do you do you sort of start with a nutshell idea and then work with the company as you go do you do you start off with a big number on the first day or do you prefer to work how do you sort of approach it 
So I, so I think it would probably be different for every musical. I think that um, sometimes a lot of choreographers like to crack on with the biggest number. For instance, Cats, like I said, the Jellicle Ball was 10 minutes. So I was like, <laughs> um, I like to, I like to prepare I like to prepare, but I like to not completely prepare. So I like to have, I go, I go in knowing what I want to, ha having an idea of what I want to achieve with the number. I have an idea of how the choreo, how the, the number has made me feel and how that will then um, help with the storyline. I like to, um, if it's a brand new musical, I, I, I like everybody to learn everything because, and now this isn't always the best thing. I will put my hands up um, because some, some, it, it, when it's a brand new musical, I, I, the reason why I like everybody to learn everything is things can change very, very quickly. And the director was set might pull two people out, which were who were going to be in your eight for that dance break, and then you have to bring another two in. So if if you're short on time, rehearsal time, and you just want everybody to be prepared, I'm just like everybody learn everything, just just so just so we can then play around. And then once you got to think that even as a choreographer, even if you've been into a thing, we, we do a thing called pre-production, which is normally the choreographer, and there may be two dancers, maybe four dancers. And then if you're then looking at an ensemble of 20 dancers, it might you might go, oh, it looks completely different. Whoa, I can't see anything, it's too busy. So, so it's all about, I think about being about 70%. 70% has been my, maybe that's a bit too much. I don't know, but just to, just to have an idea, see your work. Does that work? Doesn't it work? Play it, then play around with formations. And then all of a sudden, um, the number will start creating itself. Don't be afraid to power through and get to the end of a number, but also don't be afraid to say, I need a coffee. I need, <laughs> I need, I need, I need 10 minutes. Um, what I tend to always do is be in early <laughs> and normally in early practicing or playing around with ideas that I'm going to teach. Um, but I think you never really know until you see it on the bodies and see it, the people in the group, how something's going to plan out. And there's some people who can plan and plan and plan. But I think if you're, if you're planning and planning and planning, you're not, allowing for anything that's going to happen in the room that that might change and i think as a choreographer you want i i want this stuff to change because i wanted people to bring ideas if you I, I i love i don't like i don't like dancers that are chatty but i like dancers that have a voice you do you know what i mean like not when i i i'm not saying i want you to be like just chatting when i'm trying to teach but give me your opinion I'm not saying that I'm going to, it's going to change like everything. the collaborative process of a dancer taking part in the creative process with you. Exactly. Well, I, I'm never going to dance the show. You are. <laughs> Eight shows a week. How does that feel? How, how does that, do, 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 do you feel better on the other leg? Like, let's try, let's try everything. I think re the rehearsal room should be the safest space in the land. You should be able to make the worst mistakes. You should be able to fall over. You should be able to try the most crazy ideas. And there's no judgment. There's there's just every there should just be a want for everybody to be on the same page and to to have the end goal in mind. But I think that it's a real uh, collaboration, and 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 I really stand by that. I mean, I would love for you to do a people skills masterclass for every director, like <laughs> in every department. I just, like sign me up for whatever Billy Mitchell's doing. I, I agree <laughs> on all three of my legs, like <laughs> both my left feet. 
No, I love it. I love what I, working with movers is my favorite. <laughs> I bet. It's my favorite, favorite. Strong movers. Yes. Sign so me up. A very strong mover. Yeah. Sign me up. I'm like, definitely love it. Love it. Because there's, um, uh, I love that there's, it, there's less you, you dancers. There's like, there's, there's, a less awareness which is fantastic which i'm like oh that's like natural and raw movement yeah give me yes, that <laughs> yeah, in terms of your own sort of audition process or interview process for your work how how does that work in the in the choreographical dance captain world how do you how were you as a dancer preparing yourself for auditions and then now how does one job lead to another? Are you interviewing? Are you auditioning? Is it word of mouth? Is it, I just worked with Billy Mitchell on this and he's amazing. Let's get him on the next one. How does that, and how has it worked for you as well, Jess? Like, are you, are you auditioning for every job or is it who you know? Like, how's how's the network working? The really good one, that is. Um, I'm auditioning now and I'm not auditioning for Dance Captain or anything in that world. I think because my niche in that world isn't as wide as some people's. I think I like a specific part of that world and not the whole the whole part of it. But I'm auditioning now. But I, like I said about School of Rock, I, Billy saw something in me having never seen me on stage or seen me perform. But he just saw something in my personality, which is oh, I didn't know amazing. you never seen me perform. That's never, mental. No, never seen me perform. Never seen me do wow. one dance step, sing one note say one word on stage he just knew me socially that's it I just wow. knew, I just knew I don't I don't know I don't know why I just knew it is she mad it's perfect that is crazy I just knew I think you just get a feeling I think um that's probably quite rare though to be fair that probably is quite rare that you're going to be sat with someone in that position that would say that but maybe not. But, but, but it, 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 yeah, I understand what you're saying, but do it, does it, a lot of dance captain and choreographer partnerships come from working together and getting a feel? Yeah. We still got the vibe, you know? So we st th th there was still that connection and that I knew I would be able to work with her very well. And I knew that she would understand what I was saying and how um she's very intelligent in 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 understanding what i what i needed to what not what i needed to achieve what the show what i needed to achieve for the show you know yeah. in that's in that sense so i think that 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 connection was still there sometimes there's the connection between you'll have um the 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 dance captain and then an, an ensemble member and if the dance captain then moves up like it might be that that you've worked with them before um i, I think it probably is more common in that way isn't it like I, you, I you, so. because you do need to have because it is such a department you've got to work so closely i do think like associates select there and they often stay together so you'll find like you know, Alistair David has an associate that we all know. She always works with him or, or you know, Drew's work with the same, similar people a lot. And and that's yes. not like, it's not because they're like favouritism. It's not favouritism. It's just, I know you've got to be, because it's a stressful job and it's a full on job and it's such a collaborative job, an amazing team to be part of. I think it's so important that you get on with the person. So I do think if you've got good people skills, maybe that is one of the key things in that world more than auditioning probably yes i think it's it's i think that people you can definitely get dance captain from auditions and you if it's on your cv and even if it's not it can it, you can like fit into that world i think when it comes to the already teams i think it, they tend to already be established and you you do move you not all this not it's not always the same but it might be like you might even have two or three people the choreographer who then moves around um and and it, recommendations it, as well I think yeah. in that world quite a lot it is quite a lot like oh their assistant was amazing you should work with them yes and there's lots it's lots of um 
when 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 you have the creatives on the show even like the resident directors and they all know the the resident director on the next show that you're auditioning for and if you're a dance captain I'm, sp- I'm speaking from my personal it, you go from one show as dance captain you're auditioning for another show and then the resident director messages the other resident director and says this is what they've done this is how they work for us I think they'd be good for you. Like th- th- there is that word of mouth, you know. Um, I think uh, as a choreographer, you 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 can also choose the people that you need. Who <laughs> like if you need someone that's good at counts, <laughs> if you're like a bit loosey goosey, and then you need someone to work that out. Which lots of choreographers do that. Some lots of choreographers just dance, and then they go, "What did I just do?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so me, true me being one of them sometimes I, I just do something I go what did I just do <laughs> well what was that bit before like you know so <laughs> to, to have that bra- is that it's the that second brain it's the extra yeah. brain. that's kind of what you're doing it's um it's crazy how much relationships play into working life in general and I just think young people need to know this now like learn it at 16 learn it at 17 maintain your relationships work hard do your job well it will pay off further down the line and i remember when we were at um, royal academy they said um we don't care who you get on with or don't get on with on this course you be nice to everyone because the person that you might not click with personality wise might be a casting director one day like you're not all going to be actors 80 percent of you are not going to stay as a performing artist in the musical theatre industry. Some of you will be agents, some of you will be casting directors, some of you will be directors, some of you will be choreographers. And it's true, like now here I am at 37 and one of my best friends on the course now works for Curtis Brown. Another one is a casting director. Another one is like, um, he's like a mindfulness coach for performers and does sort of that self-help. But it's like, you just never know, do you? the person in front of you right now who you're working with right now whether you click with them naturally or not you never know what they're going to go on to next and everyone talks to everyone so it's really worth doing the best job you can do and being the best person that you can be work hard and be a nice person those are my like top bits of advice for this industry like work your ass off and be the nicest person in the room because it's worth it just it's worth it to put that work in i think Yes, please. Thank you very much. More of that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 100%. Right. Josh and and Emma, have you got any other questions? Because, I mean, we've got one through one A4 page, but I feel like let's cherry pick the best ones now because we don't want to keep these guys all night long. I might. Well, firstly, this this has all been absolutely fascinating, really 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 interesting to hear and it's not like it's not a role I know anything about or anything so it's kind of it's so it's nice to hear um I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for Byron's questions initially so Byron is one of is the music director for our Hampshire branch doing high school musical so he's got he's submitted two questions for when he watches the recording back first one is in music we often have specialities in style and genre but of course need to have a well varied knowledge. How important slash useful slash common is having a genre speciality in dance and, cho- and choreography? That's the first question from Byron. It's a very good question. Mm, it's an interesting it, question. It's making me really think. Yeah, it's a really, really great question. I think that um, as, as you move through your career, not not no, not necessarily as you move through your career, I think. For me, it obviously depends on the piece that you're working on, but find a style, which I think is a really, really wonderful thing and something that 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 doesn't need to be discouraged. You could you could each choreographer can have their style that they work with and that's how they move through. I think that as you move through different musicals, there's going to be different elements of it that's required. For instance, um if you're going to do a more traditional stuff and a more uh, traditional show and it needs some tap dance and that's not quite your bag that's obviously going to be quite difficult you know or if you're living in the balletic world um i think then that then then you're going to have to have some of that in your back pocket you know so but i think 
also play into your strengths. And if you're a jazz dancer, jazz dancing is such a big umbrella that, that, that there can be so much variation in it, which, which keeps it really, really exciting. Um, yeah. Anything else? <laughs> I think it makes you so much more employable to have um, lots of different dance styles up your belt. And I think that that's the aim of the game, isn't it? To like work as much as you can. So we got bills to pay. Um, but so I think it makes you more employable. But I really like the idea of nailing one area as well Thanks. and being like known for being amazing at that style. Because then someone goes, oh, I need a this is not me, but I need a balletic, perfect feet, leggy brunette. And they go, I know, I know the person, you know, it's this person. And that, that can kind of be really amazing to like climb the ladder of one niche and be yes. everyone's girl for that thing. Or, yes. but, so, but then also like to keep working, it's really good to be good at lots of things. And, but I sometimes think per, this is so personal, but being a master of one, can be really beneficial yes to you if you really are the master of it though it's not like be lazy and just go oh I don't really like anything other than jazz so I'm gonna like yeah. be rubbish in my ballet classes it's like work you work as hard as you can and everything but like celebrate your niche as well yes yeah, like when you find your niche like hone it yeah and be I the best at it I think like Bob Fosse, obviously the style is, I don't even have the words. It's, it, it's incredible, you know, but he wasn't, if you see clips of him dancing as a dancer, he, he, he wasn't always in, he wasn't in that style. He's a fantastic jazz dancer. And then, and then he created this style, which has literally shaped our whole business on stage through television. Um, yeah, because he was and, pigeon-toed and round-shouldered, and he went, "Well, let's make a dance style that suits that." Like so, so it's. I think that I think knowledge is power, like Jesse said, like Jess said. But also, there's also a lot of power in you know being like, you know what, I'm very good at this. I'm going to run with this. As a core, I like, I feel like I like, like there's a, I remember when I did film studies, learning the word auteur and learning that like, when you watch a film, it's quite nice to watch it and go, that's Tarantino. Oh, I bet you, I bet you this is like Wes Anderson, whoever. And yeah. like, like, I kind of like, I, I feel like I can watch something and know certain choreographer stuff and be like, oh, that's that's Billy or that's Drew yes. or that's Andrew Wright or wh whoever it is, like knowing certain people's style. I quite like watching something and being yeah. familiar with their style as a, like an auteur kind of, I don't know if that's the right word in this context, but yeah, I find that interesting as well. Yeah. No, that's great. It's, it's really like, because it's one where as kind of, well, as a musician and someone who just, and a producer like I, d I don't identify those styles in the same way that you would kind of working in them so actually that's really like just purely watching it I can see it coming across but I don't see how those interact in the same way necessarily so that's like, that's really that's really interesting and really useful I think useful to know and then Byron has a follow-up question of what tools do you use before the rehearsal room to create any co any choreography a set or with? So, what's useful for the music and other teams to provide you to provide you with beforehand? Mm. Coffee? No. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> what I really love is um, rehearsal tracks. So, um, depending on what you are depending so if it's a musical i like the rehearsal track with the original vocal or a vocal um also then a track that is is a backing track if you're using backing tracks depends depends what you want if you if you're lucky lucky enough to have a musician in with you um like in and, wicked they have a drummer Yes. And that is so exciting as a dancer and I'm sure choreographer like oh, what, in the rehearsal room. 
in yeah, the audition yeah. and the and rehearsal the room. Yeah. Yeah, the percussionist, yeah. So to have that and to know where you're, to if if you've got that and where you can just go, I would like to go from this part, and then you can turn um, to the MD and say, okay, can you count me in or give me a time, to, and then you can go in and I'm going to go from this part and that part. Um, yeah, I think anything like that, any tracks, lyrics, I love the lyrics, um, but definitely the rehearsal tracks uh, as early as possible for me. So then you've got them and you know what you're playing with. Sometimes you don't get them. I've, sometimes I've got tracks really late and I've been like pulling my hair out just because I've then been worried. Um, um, so, yeah, as much as you can support in that way, I think it's it's really great. And do you, do you find you... I guess, does it fall within your scope to go back and ask for, actually, can we have an extra eight bars here, an extra 16 bars here, kind of within certain bits? And how does that, how do you kind of break to do yeah. so in that case? So I've, I... been in, I've been in a, an audition room where a, a, a choreographer said to the MD, can we change to a seven, eight time signature? <laughs> and so it's like a big old change. And it's like, yes, I've definitely, that definitely happens. I I I recently completely changed the tempo um uh mid number that that mm-hmm. intentionally <laughs> um that I wanted to really slow slow down it was in the Jellicle ball I just really wanted to slow down the top part of it to to create this the the the, the illusion of the moon the light of the moon going over them which then which then went into the rest of the number um but i think in some in some cases you can have um dance arrangers so the choreographer will will work with the dance arranger and normally be like i want this i need eight bars it's going to be this it's going to be a hoedown or it's going to be a tango Uh, and and um i think it's really good for the music department and the choreographer if they can get into the room together to work stuff out well, that's great that's great and really i think useful for our teams to know is that the the, the quite off, these things quite quite often get put as kind of very separate you go in one room with one person you go in one room with another director or choreographer or and actually they are very much linked together and i mean I've... off the off the back of that so just out of curiosity do you prefer working on kind of existing shows where you have some form of ballpark of what you're doing do you prefer something brand new and a kind of a cross between both i think it's um i i, I kind of have no preference you know i think <laughs> if you, with the shows that are already running i think you know what you need to achieve um and you know you kind of got those guidelines but it's still you still have to start from scratch because you have people coming not knowing anything. So, so the the journey, even, no matter how many times you've worked on that show or if you're doing a replica, you're still starting from the somebody's doing it for the very first time. So you're still working together. You 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 will find your rhythm. Um, I think new shows are exciting for everybody as well because you're you're all doing stuff for the first time and. You, you, it's about playing right it's playing and trying ideas and and that's why i that's why i love having a, a having a live music having an md with me all the time i i prefer to tracks but i know that's not always i'm putting on my, i know that's not always doable <laughs> <laughs> but that is what I, but that is what i would like <laughs> just because i love it and i'm like what do you think you know like how, yeah, the collaboration again. Yeah. How do you manage your time with a rehearsal process? Do you ever find that you get to the last sort of third of it and are panicking because you haven't gotten everything in? Or do you feel like, are you so organised that you know by the end of this week we're going to have done X, Y and Z and then next week it'll be X, Y and Z? And then if you do end up in a high pressure situation where something just needs to be finished by a deadline, how do you then approach that? We've so, been in that situation, haven't we, Bill? <laughs> so I think that I would say the bottom line is you get to you get to a situation where it just has to be done. And <laughs> and and, and uh, 
there tends no that not there tends to be there might be a situation where you finish a number but it's not the number but you have to finish it you are yeah. you're doing a run through of this part and and it, you there has to be a rough idea and as long as the actors are safe um i think there's it's always good to schedule and um and like be realistic but but you do constantly want to push on as well you do want to push forward and and you'll find that you will start numbers and you won't finish them and that feel weird because then the next day you'll start another number but <laughs> as you can't that that's just what happens that's and when you get the video is the most important thing <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, because sometimes if, if it's a new show, if it's going to be a new version, which a lot of a lot of your students is going to be, you to film is good because then you might not come back to this for like four days, yeah. and so like, what did I do in that 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 moment? I think um, you never know. You can prepare, prepare as much as you can, but obviously you never know how uh, what's going to happen in the room. But I think keep pushing forward try and schedule as much as you can um, and be realistic. And I think working from the top through is, is always good unless you've got a really big dance number that you might want to crack on with first. And also have your assistant help you keep track of time, not in an annoying, naggy way, but just in a like, I don't want to spend longer than two hours on this bit. Can you let me know when I've got half an hour left? And it's like, and then this ha help having because you're being creative and thinking of the stuff and doing the creative your brain can't be thinking about the time and how long you're taking like yeah. to keep on schedule so actually I think that was something that we're quite good at being like you yeah. say to me just look after this for me for a sec or just tell me in like this and like yes. staring it between you a bit is really good yeah if you've got so you might say work through working through act one or working through scene one two and three but then we would write a schedule together and I say, I'm spending 45 minutes on this. I'm spending an hour on this. Then we've got to do a 15 minute break. And Jess would know those times. So I would go and then five minutes before the end, she's like, right, you've got to stop in five minutes. I go, okay, I'm, like, I'm going to go over for a little bit because I just want to finish this section and then I'll claw it back somewhere else. Mm. So that's, yeah. How do you manage it when you've got two departments who both need the time? Do you have you ever been in a creative process where the director's like, no, I need them, and we need to get this done, and you're like, but I need to get this done. And how do you how do you manage like those relationships like across the production team? Have you ever been in a show where that hasn't happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably more likely. Um, I think you just need to speak, and I think that you both fight in for the time actually <laughs> wastes time. So it's bet that there, there's, there's always got to be a compromise where you go, okay, you do that, but to, this is what I normally say. <laughs> yes, you can do that, but I need the whole of tomorrow morning. Deal? <laughs> yeah. Deal. Okay. Or, or, oh, there's lots of technical stuff that still needs to be finished. Yes, finish the lighting, but I need nobody to come and speak to me before four o'clock tomorrow. You know, like you, you and I think it's there's a, a way. Yeah, there's a compromise, and also you, you know, I think you know once you get into the flow of things, you know what you need and you know what times you need. So I uh, and some days I'd be like, I don't know. In in inside, I'd be like, I don't know. How I'm going to finish this. This 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 the, the show's not going to get finished. So then that's when you just turn and you go, yeah, it's fine, but I need this because you're all because even though that feels scary, you're all on the same page. You're all you all want the same thing. So, yeah. so uh, as a team of directors, musical directors, choreographers, everybody, stage management. You all want the same thing. You all want to achieve the same thing. So just be honest, but in a in a nice way, because they want the same thing as you do. I guess it comes back to serving the story again, doesn't it? You're all there to serve the same story. So it's it's okay. And like constantly reminding yourself 
of that um but yeah our young people are, they don't have a huge amount of time in rehearsal before they put on their shows and you know they are going to be collaborating with each other as the stage managers the md the directors with a cast of you know from 10 to 30 however many they have of their own peers so it's like you're not you're not you are talking to the cast right now but you're also talking to, to you're mainly talking to the young people that are going to be MDing, directing you know like josh was the md for for the burton branch and you know like so he has that had that experience and now he's putting on two of his own shows um so it's like yeah young people that really are kind of doing this for the first time and like how do you manage those professional relationships without going no i need this time now and like not upsetting someone you know yeah it's a it's a it's a balance um emma have you got any other questions um i was just thinking like um a lot of tonight we sort of heard about advice that you have maybe for us or like things that you've said to other people that you've been working with but I just wondered if there was any advice that you were given sort of earlier in your career that you've carried through with you and sort of remembered and used that. That's nice. That's a lovely. Billy, Billy, I, I would, I wouldn't have been in that role if it wasn't for Billy but Billy just was gave me so much advice I'm trying to pick the best one should have thought about this before I open my mouth um the best one was do it like you not do it like me and not do it like someone else that you think is good find your way to do it and that was on stage in my cover but that was also when I was dance captaining for the or because I was assistant and then I moved up to dance captain and that was all the way through so I think for you for you like you can have you should take that from Billy via me is that like do do it like you would not like anyone else just find your way to do that thing yeah that was really good advice my yes <laughs> um my I've said I said it earlier the leave it at stage door try not to take try not to take the the job the, the, the workload home with you. Um, I think that you also, everybody that you're going to be working with is different. And that's a brilliant, wonderful thing. And some people are going to want more out of situations than others. And that, that's, that, that just, that's just life. Um, it's very, very easy to take everything personally, um, mm. to, to think, overthink things and to, but, but I think if you're, if you're confident in your, in your quest to keep the, the original ideas, which I've said from the beginning to keep, to keep all of that alive in the show, then, then I don't think that you can go wrong with that. Um, Another one of yours, Billy, is um, it's not my business. One of Billy's like stock phrases is that's not my business. And I, I use that in my like everyday life, not even my yeah. theatre life, like just in my life when I'm stressing about something or I'm th overthinking about something or worrying about something. It's just like going that's not my business. I don't need to worry about that. And not in, not in a, it just, I remember somebody was being a little bit sassy and a little bit, somebody was just not taking a note really well. And this is really rare, but it's just one day this person was in a certain mood and, he, and they weren't taking the note or whatever. And they were a little bit sassy. And I remember think, asking Billy, like, wow, you haven't let that upset you or affect you at all. Like you're so fine. That probably would have upset me. And he was like, how they're feeling today is not my business and I was like that is and I use that all the time so if someone does accidentally upset you or offend you in the way that they phrase something just be like their mood today is not my business <laughs> I love that one yeah and it's it so important to like emotionally unattach yourself from someone else's behavior that is just it's just a key to life isn't it like um, don't don't take someone else's mood personally because it's not about you and it's really hard that's really hard to really hard. I, I wasn't always like that it's it's really hard it's it's hard because um various things some people don't like people in positions of power some people don't people some people might be think that they're doing something absolutely right and you just want to tweak it it's just little things but it's it's nothing is personal that's yeah it's, 
but it's hard because you 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 love the show so much and you're looking after it. It's all personal to you. So or like me and Jess, you just want to be loved by everybody. All yeah. <laughs> You'll do anything. <laughs> love me. <laughs> Please love me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, guys. You've been so, so amazing. I'm like, every single time like we have these conversations, I'm blown away. And it's even as a professional actor myself, it's so like inspiring and fascinating to hear what someone else's job is like within this industry. It's so fascinating for me. I've never been a dance captain or a choreographer, but I've known plenty in my time, but just to have like an insight into their world and what their job looks like on a daily basis and what they might be coming through the door with pressure wise on that day. I think it's just so important, isn't it? To be aware of everyone around you, what they're coping with, what their aims and their goals are. You know, um, can you sum up your job in three words? <laughs> um, <laughs> to finish uh, us off with a flourish. Everyone, what about I can't think of three words now? Um, can we have three dance moves then? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, point on one count of eight. <laughs> yes. Um, I think. Yes, we do. <laughs> I think it is. I can't think. No, um, I think that it's. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I've got it. I've got one. Go. I've got. I've got people. Hmm. Maths. Weirdly, which I'm really bad at, but people, maths and love yes easy I love it. care love yeah. or care nice i think creation slash ideas um <laughs> collaboration and magic oh beautiful oh, oh one more story yes, yes. story story overarching the whole story, thing story yes. story yeah always oh always God. always whatever you do always think what you're trying to say or what what how this is going to aid the story in any way because if it doesn't aid the story then it's out it's <laughs> i think we should start a podcast oh. it's been lovely to chat <laughs> it's been so amazing to have you both thank you so 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 much no, thank you so much oh, well done. this is amazing it's fantastic i can't wait to hear can't wait to hear all about it i think it's it's such an incredible thing that you're doing so it's so exciting and yes young people smash it you're going to be amazing they are going to be amazing and hopefully we'll see some of you in the business soon yeah See and we'll be keeping our eyes peeled on your careers as well and all the amazing things you're both getting up to so oh. and now we know you you know we might drop you slide into your dms and you know meet for a coffee yes <laughs> <laughs> lots of love guys thank you lots of love thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. so lovely to meet you all bye bye, bye. 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 bye.